In verse 3, God said to him, Son of man, can these bones live? He said, I answered, O God, O Lord God, you know. I love this. He did not presume upon the grace of God. Yet at the same time, he did not doubt the grace of God or its power. God, if you want them to live, they will live. There's a wonderful thing when everything has to do with God and only God can do it. There's an assurance in that. Is there anywhere in the scripture that says that we can't take the gospel to the nations? Is it anywhere? No. Is there anywhere in the scriptures where it says that there can't be a revival? That nations cannot be turned? No, it doesn't say that. Don't say it does. It doesn't. This is not a time for tiny men with small hearts and tight spirits. This is not a time to watch the news and Instagram and become depressed. Why? If he wants them to live, they'll live. He'll live. And he tells me that he wants a very large people for his son. And it's our job, our task to go get them. To go get them. Man, most people have no reason to live. We have a reason to live and to die. What was the prophet's attitude? Hope in God. Sorrow when he looked at the bones. When he heard God's voice. Hope. And go on. What did the prophet do? Verse 3. He pro- verse 4. He prophesied. He prophesied, verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied. Power in that word. He spoke forth the word of God. If you're a preacher here, what a privilege has been given to you to prophesy. Preach, not from vision, not from feeling, but from an inspired, inerrant, infallible word. But now I want to say something for a moment about preaching. I want to go over to Paul's instruction to Timothy, a passage you're all familiar with, but just listen. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge, who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season to provide them as much information as their brain can take. That's not what it says. That's not what it says. There is a place for New Testament survey. And there is a place for Sunday school lessons. But those things aren't preaching. Are you happy with your sermon? Because you got all the words right? Because you're exegetical work was so careful because all these great expositors would applauded you for not being like Paul Washer are you content with what you did if you're content with those things then step out of the pulpit don't ever go back in there again you're looking for people to be converted you're looking for saints to be edified 
You're not content with your performance. You want to see God move. And you will not be satisfied. You will not be happy. You'll take hold of the horns of the altar and say, give me this thing. Give me souls or I die. You preach as a dying man to dying men and you preach as though you will never preach again.